صدق الله العظيم وعن ابي بكر الصديق رضي الله تعالى عنه انه قام على المنبر بعد الاول فقال سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول ثم بكى فقال اسال الله تعالى العفو والعافيه فان احدا لم يعط بعد اليقين خيرا من العافيه او كما قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم respected ulama e kiram elders beloved brothers in islam allah subhanahu wa ta'ala system and plan every one of us whether it be the muslim ummah on an individual or a collective level or it be humanity at large we are going through a very trying very difficult phase or period there is an overriding concern and worry that has afflicted every individual to some extent some way or another many of us are facing facing financial difficulties almost every day recently we are bombarded with news of loss of life of some near beloved family member or relative or friend in a short space of time life as we know it has been radically changed to the extent that if one year ago the so called new normal that we are facing had to be presented to us we would be extremely surprised and many of us would have felt it is impossible many of the freedoms that we took for granted have been taken away from us and generally we find that it is just this topic that is has become the norm everyone is talking about it every one of us has been affected to some extent to varying extents and we are wondering what direction is humanity going towards my respected brothers we can go on about what we are referring to the question that each one of us needs to be asking ourselves is this an accident has it happened by chance or is there some meaning behind it allah subhanahu wa ta'ala quite clearly in the quran tells us afa hasibtum انما خلقناكم عبثا وانكم الينا لا ترجعون فتعالى الله الملك الحق لا اله الا هو رب العرش الكريم الله says that you think the life of this world whatever is happening is just happening by chance corona virus appeared out of nowhere the entire world system economy has been shaken up just by chance whatever you are experiencing on a daily basis abas there's no meaning behind it is this your thinking allah says annakum ilaina la turjaun and you are not going to return back to us this is the crunch question that day that every one of us is traveling towards that inescapable reality which gives meaning to this entire life that crunch moment which is going to be the decider every one of us is on a journey and that journey ends up with one pivotal moment and what is that moment the moment when it is only going to be myself and allah the moment when it is going to be malikul muluk khaliqul kawni wal makan rabbul mashriqaini wal maghribain the one who created this universe the one who created life the one who created every situation condition and circumstance and allah tells you tells us in the quran that whatever happened to you in this world whether it was corona virus whether it was a pandemic whether it was loss of life whether it was loss of property whatever happened did not happen abas without meaning it happened as a test and a trial and a tribulation to prepare you for this day when you are going to stand in front of allah what is the answer that you are going to give allah the verse of the quran which i recited in the beginning poignantly the quran sums up this reality for us 
Allah poses what is called istifham inkari. Istifham inkari is, like we say in English, a rhetorical question. Ahasib nas Ahasib nas An yutraku ay yaqulu amanna wa hum la yuftanun. In humanity there are two groups. One are those who are deprived of iman. And they leave this world without iman. Allah protect us for them. The reality is khalidin fiha abada. They will reside in Jahannam forever. The other is the second group. Those who are blessed with iman. Those who are blessed with hidayat. In reality what are they given? They are given such a great ni'mat. Such a great bounty that Allah has given them miftahul jannah, the key to jannah, the key to eternal pleasure. And it is this second group that Allah addresses in these verses, that what do you think? Ahasib an nas the rhetorical question. What do you think? Akal mara gaya? Has your intelligence been destroyed? What is wrong with you? This is the connotations of these verse, this verse. What is wrong with you? What is your perception of reality? Do you think that we are going to give you iman? Do you think that we are going to bless you with countless ni'mats? Look around us. What is the recent conversation? Somebody has gone onto a ventilator. People are looking around for oxygen machine. Recently when there was the load shedding, the worry was those patients that are at home that are using those apparatus, what will happen during the two or three hours when the, when the lights cut off? Whether it was the sick patient itself or whether it was his family members or whether it was those associated with him, helter skelter, all of us were running in different directions for what? The concern about oxygen, the concern about the respiratory system, the concern about breathing difficulties. How many of us took a few seconds to pause and consider? Nine months in the womb of the mother, that child did not breathe. If it breathed, it would have died. There was a door in the heart of every child, you and I, that was locked, that was not allowing the oxygen to come in. When this child entered the world, when this amanat entered the world, what happens? The gynecologist is there. The Expectant mother is there, the nurses are there, the family members are in the background, everyone is waiting for what? Waiting for the first cry of that child. Waiting for that child to start crying because in that first cry, miraculously what happens? Allah's system, that door opens, that's in the heart. And for the rest of the life of this child, that door will remain open. Once that door sh- flings open, the lungs start. What is the lungs? Just a piece of flesh. 1.3 kilogram plus minus is the weight of an adult person's lungs. Right hand side, left hand side, piece of flesh. What is the reality? 300 to 500 million air sacs. If that lung had to be stretched out, it will form a distance of 2,400 kilometers. 50 billion tubes are transporting 10,000 liters of blood every day to your lungs. Where did this intelligence come from? Where did this understanding come from beforehand? That in order to purify your blood, you need to give it a bath in oxygen. Outside 21% in the atmosphere, Allah has kept the level of oxygen constant. The sun is working for you, the leaves are working for you, the plants are working for you, the vegetation of this world is working for you. In fact, it is said the Amazon jungles of South America are the lungs of the world. Allah has put countless creations, countless balances, countless interbalances into place to produce this beautiful, fundamental, mind-boggling system that 20,000 times a day, you and I are breathing in and out. And from infancy, throughout this entire life, this beautiful system is in place. Mind-boggling, we can't even go into the details. It's not appropriate for the occasion of Jumu'ah, time is too short. Has... Allah at any time sent us a bill. Has Allah asked you to pay for this ventilating machine? Has Allah asked you to pay for the 8,000 liters of oxygen that you are taking out of the atmosphere every day? 
Have you considered this one great ni'mat of Allah? Allah calls out to you in the Quran, أَحَسِبَ nas أَنْ yutraku أَنْ يَقُولُوا آمَنَّا وَهُمْ لَا يُفْتَنُونَ What do you think? We will bless you with iman. We will bless you with these countless ni'mats. But they won't be meaning to this life. You will not be tested. Allah is asking you, do you feel you are not going to be tested? Is my jannat so cheap? Is there no price tag? I often give this example, explaining this verse, Ibrahim bin Adham rahimahullah, one day he wanted to use the public toilet facilities. Someone was standing at the entrance, you have to pay a little bit, few pennies. Sage of Islam, Allah wala, what happens when he is asked to pay to enter the toilet, he starts crying. His disciples are with him. Hazrat, kya ho gaya? What has happened? Why are you crying? This is a toilet, just a few pennies. He says, this is the home of jinnat, fisk and fujur, shayateen, najasat. I can't enter here for free. I have to pay to enter here. How am I going to enter Allah's jannat for free? Is jannat so cheap? Ala inna silat Allahi ghaliya. Ala inna silat Allahi jannah. Allah says, listen. The price of Allah is expensive. Every one of us wants this. It is expensive. Allah's price is jannah. That is the goal. And Allah says, you will be tested. وَلَقَدْ فَتَنَّ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ فَلَيَعْلَمَنَّ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ الصَّدَقُوا وَلَيَعْلَمَنَّ الْكَاذِبِينَ Allah says, we tested the nations of the past. You people of Iman also will be tested. And what is the underlying objective? We will make it known. We will make it apparent. We will make it clear. Who is Sadiq in his Iman? Who is Sadiq in his relationship with Allah? Who is true in his ta'aluk with Allah? Who is it that will hold fast to the rope of Allah? Coronavirus or coronavirus father can come. Dajjal can come, Allah protect us. Poverty can come, loss of life can come, halat and conditions can come. But he is sadiq in his iman, he will never move. وَلَيَعْلَمَنَّ الْكَاذِبِينَ And on the other hand, conversely, there will be those Allah protect us who will fail in this test. And that is the crunch question. Not whether I survived coronavirus or not. Not what has happened, not the economical turmoil. Not who has passed away, those who have passed away, Allah give them the darajat of shaheed and the highest stages in Jannah. The hadith is clear, their mot is the mot of shuhada. This is selection from Allah. And coronavirus kaan kol kar sun lena. Kaan kol kar sun lena. Dil ke... Dilki, listen with the ears of the heart. Listen with the ears of the heart. No one died with coronavirus. Allah used it as a means. He died because his time was up. He died because his time was up. Quran has told us, "Walakum miadu yom, la tastaqirun anhu saatan, wala tastaqdimun." There is an appointed time, and when that time comes. Whether he's 32, 42, 50 or 16 or 1 or 70, that appointed time is in Allah's knowledge and when it comes, Allah will use the coronavirus, Allah will use the bullet of a highway robber, Allah will use some sickness, Allah will use cancer, Allah will use a natural cause, Allah will use whatever he wants, but لا تستأخرون عنه ساعة ولا تستقدمون Not one second's extension will be given to anyone. Don't fall into a trap. Don't fall into the deception of shaitan. This, this halat and condition that we are facing today, unfortunately, my respected brothers, every direction you turn, there is a culture of fear. We are afraid. Naturally, we want safety. We want security. We want protection. This, this is natural and Sharia recognizes this. The beloved uncle of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Sayyidina Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhuma. He says, my nephew, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said to me, he gave me advice, that, oh my uncle, ya am, oh my uncle, akthiru, akthiru dua al-masalam, akthiru min Allah ta'ala, su'al al-afiyah, oh kama qal. He said, my uncle, my nephew said to me, oh my beloved uncle, excessively ask Allah for protection. Excessively ask Allah for safety. The hadith which I mentioned, 
Time is limited, but contextualize it. Who is the narrator? Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu, afdalul bashar ba'd al-anbiya. The greatest human being that ever lived after the anbiya alayhi salatu wasalam. He delivers a khutbah. Khutbah where? On member of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wasallam, on the member of Rasul Ipaq sallallahu alayhi wasallam. This khutbah is delivered after the demise of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. There was turmoil. This was also a test from Allah. The greatest calamity that ever befell humanity was the loss or the demise of Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Sahaba was shaken to the core. Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu rose to the challenge of that time. He is now delivering a khutbah. Decades of suhbat with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. What is the message that he chooses to deliver? He says, I heard on the same member, my beloved Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam one year ago. I heard on the same member, what message, what was so important, contextualize this. Abu Bakr says this, I heard directly from my beloved one year ago on this member and then he starts crying. Such was his love for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And then he said, my Nabi said, Is'alu Allah ta'ala al-affa wal-afiyya. Is'alu Allah ta'ala al-affa wal-afiyya. He said, beg from Allah, cry before Allah, make dua before Allah for forgiveness and for protection. Why? This is a human Human nature, we want to be protected, we want to be safe, we want our families to be safe. But, do we let this culture of fear overtake us? Do we become those who hide away in some cave out of fear? Do we become those who become paranoid out of fear? Do we become those who start pointing the finger now in every direction? Allah protect us. You went to the masjid, you caught the virus. You went certain place, you caught the virus. You met a certain person, you caught the virus. Do this, do that, you will be protected from the virus. Face the reality, my respected brothers. Face the reality. Face the reality. Science has failed in the face of this virus. The medical fraternity of this world has been shaken to its core in the face of this virus. Every system of protection, so-called protection has been utilized and yet still people are getting this virus. It's not an accident, it's not a coincidence. It is Malikul Muluk Allah waking you up to the reality that by the Qasam of my Allah, no blade of grass moves in the heavens and the earth without the permission of Allah. No one of you will get this virus without the permission of Allah. This virus cannot exist also without the permission of Allah. It is Allah in control. It is Allah in control. Turn back to Allah. Turn back to Allah. Knock on the door of Allah. Listen to this khutbah that Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala gives on the authority of Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. He said, ask Allah for protection. And then what does he say? فَإِنَّ أَحَدًا لَمْ يُعْتَ بَعْدَ الْيَقِينَ خَيْرًا مِنَ الْعَافِيَةِ Allahu Akbar. This sums up the entire reality for us. My Nabi said, my Nabi said, my Nabi said there is nothing better than protection that Allah will give you as long as there is one condition. One condition my Nabi attached to it. Ba'd al-yaqeen, ba'd al-yaqeen, ba'd al-yaqeen, min al-afiyah. Nothing is better than protection as long as your yaqeen in Allah is intact. As long as your yaqeen in Allah is intact. It is not that mask that protected you. It is not your social distancing that protected you. It is not your isolation that protected you. It is Allah that protected you. And if you got the virus, it was His design. Yaqeen. Yaqeen. Conviction. Because on that day, in Allah's court, this is the thing that's going to count. This is for أَنَّ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ الصَّدَقُوا وَلَيَعْلَمَنَّ الْكَاذِبِينَ This is it where Allah says we will find out who was true. You said, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, were you true? 
You said, فَعَلَمْ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ You said, رَبُّ الْمَشْرِقَيْنِ وَرَبُّ الْمَغْرِبَيْنِ You said, رَبُّ الْمَشَارِقِ وَرَبُّ الْمَغَارِبِ You said, رَبُّ السَّمَاوَاتِ السَّبَعِ وَرَبُّ الْعَرْشِ الْعَظِيمِ You said, إِنْ يَمْسَسْكَ اللَّهُ بِدُرْ فَلَا كَاشِفَ لَهُ إِلَّا هُوَ وَإِنْ يُرِدْكَ بِخَيْرٍ فَلَا رَادَّ لِفَضْلِ You said, Allah, you are my Malik. Allah, you are my Hafiz. Allah, you are my Protector. Ya Allah, I can never be harmed without your permission. I can never be benefited without your permission. You read La ilaha illallah. This was your iman. You said to Allah, my life is in your hands. My death is in your hands. You said all this. Allah says, we want to see whether you are true in this. At your hour of need, when my test came, when my test came, when the halat came, when the condition came, did you shrivel away in fear somewhere? Did you start pointing the finger of blame elsewhere? Did you abandon the house of Allah? Or did you get up in the dead of night and cry before Allah? Did you frequent the house of Allah? Did you knock on the door of Allah? Did you connect yourself with Allah? Allah says, we were testing you. And the objective of this test is that. Now when I was in hospital, one of the staff, Muslim, said to me, let's see what is going on. People are dying in every direction. So I said, we are people of Iman, this is coming from Allah. Then I asked this person, why do you think it's coming? So what was the answer? The answer that every one of us, majority of us tend to gravitate towards. What is the answer? People's actions have gone bad. People have turned away from Allah. Look at the worldly situation. My respected brothers, halat and conditions are not there for us to focus on the actions of others. Halat and conditions are not there for us to start pointing the fingers at others. Halat and conditions, what does Quran tell us? You want afiyat, you want protection, you want comfort, you want succor. You want my Allah who is qadir mutlaq who in one second brought this virus to take it away. You want the condition to be changed? What does Quran say? Inna Allah la yughayyiru ma bi qawmin hatta yughayyiru ma bi anfusihim. Allah says introspect. Introspect. Look within yourself. Allah will never change the condition until you don't change. Not the next person. My Nabi in the first khutbah he delivered sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Madinah al-Munawrah, what did he say? Man aslaha ma baynahu wa bayna Allah, aslaha Allahu ma baynahu wa bayna khalqi. He said, you correct your relationship with Allah, you ask yourself. Today you picked up the phone and certain friend passed away. Yesterday it was your auntie, the day before it was your uncle. You were reminded about your mortality. You were reminded about all your financial plans and big, big businesses and big, big plans you made for the next 10, 15 years are meaningless. You were woken up to the reality that this is mataul khurur, a life of deception. You heard of those people whose buildings are not even complete and have already gone into the qabr. So called before their time or whatever it may be. You heard all this, you were faced with all this reality around you. What did you do? Did you focus on others? Did you start pointing the finger at others? This is the trap of shaitan. The requirement, my respected brothers, is point the finger to yourself. Point the finger to yourself. And ask yourself, this condition has come from my Allah. Has it taken me closer to my Allah? Am I knocking the door of Allah? Have I, have I made toba? Have I changed my life? Have I asked Allah forgiveness for my major sins? Have I revised my objectives and understood? My Nabi said, Ud nafsaka min ahlil qubur, count yourself amongst the residents of the grave. Have I analyzed my objectives in my life? Am I crying in dua? Have I come back to the masjid? Allah protect us, Allah forgive us, I hope I am wrong as an ummah we have failed. As an ummah, we have failed, our masjids are empty. When it was four, five safs, it's two safs. In every direction, we can blame the authorities, blame whoever you want. The question is, has this brought us closer to Allah? Has this condition brought us closer to Allah? That is the only question. If it has brought you closer to Allah, if you are frequenting the masjid, 
If you have changed the objectives of your life, if you have understood that you are on borrowed time, this time has to be given to the service of humanity, this time has to be given for the work of Rasulullah wasallam. If you have made that decision with Allah, then by the qasam of my Allah, everyone around you can die. You can lose everything, but you have gone closer to Allah. I'm sitting on the mimbar. Hundred qasams, there is no one more successful than you. But if, you have, if this has not happened, if this test has not taken you closer to Allah, if it has made you abandon the masjid, if it has made you abandon Allah, if your mayar of Quran and dua and crying before Allah hasn't increased, if you have entered into a culture of fear, you are afraid of your own shadow, you haven't connected yourself with Allah, you haven't understood that He is my Malik, He is in control, there is still time. There is still time, Allah's clemency, Allah's forgiveness, Allah's kindness. We can't even describe it. The condition around us, Wallah, this is Allah's rahmat to bring us closer to Him. Nothing my Allah does except khair and good for us. Ajaban li amril mu'min. My Nabi said, for a believer everything is good. Let it take us back to Allah. Let it, let, let it cause us to connect ourselves with Allah. Coming back to that first khutbah, my Nabi said, correct your relationship with Allah. Each one of you, correct your relationship with Allah. Introspect. Don't point the finger at others. Don't worry whether he's wearing the mask or not. Don't worry whether he's social distancing or not. Don't worry about whether... Whatever the next person is doing, come out of this. You are going to lie alone in your cupboard. You're not going to lie in his cupboard. And when Allah questions you, it will only be you. He's not going to be there. Allah is not going to ask you about anything about the next person. Come out of this trap of shaitan. Man aslaha ma baynahu wa bayna Allah. Correct your relationship with Allah. And my Nabi says, Allah will solve every problem of yours. Allah will correct your relationship with the entire creation. Allah will never change the condition of a people until you yourself do not change. This is the crunch question. Has this, connect, has this taken me closer to Allah? And on this, my respected brothers, we've run out of time. But Amanat and I will conclude as an ummah today cry tears of blood when we see what has happened to our masajid. Cry tears of blood, Allah's qasam when we see what has happened to our masajid. What has happened to this ummah? Coronavirus is Allah's test to make us come closer to Him. Not to run from His house. And not to point the fingers at others. You went to the masjid and this happened to you. Fear for your iman. Fear for your akhirat. Fear for the day when you are going to stand in Allah's court. Don't fall into this trap. The companions of Rasulullah wasallam said this. Many sahaba said this. I'm quoting the words of Abdullah bin Masood radiallahu anhu, and this I will terminate. You want to die with Iman. You want to die that Allah is happy with you. You want to die when that, that when you meet Allah, that is a meeting of serenity and calmness. That is our goal and our objective, he says, Man sarrahu, man sarrahu, kan kol kar sullina, man sarrahu, an yalqallaha, ghadan muslima, fal yuhafid, ala hadihi ahawlai salawati al-khams, haythu yunada bihinna, fa inna allaha ta'ala, shara li nabiyikum sunan al-huda, wa inna hunna min sunan al-huda. He said, any one of you, many sahaba said this, Abdullah bin Masood, I'm quoting, Radiallahu anhu. Any one of you who wants to meet Allah with his iman intact, with his deen intact, with his akhirat intact, then guard religiously your five salah in the masjid. Because Allah, Allah has ordained for his Nabi practices of hidayat that will bring hidayat for you and humanity. And this Salah wa jamaat in the masjid is amongst those practices of hidayat. Walo sallaytum fi buyutikum kama yafalu hadha al mutakhallifu anil masjid la dalaltum. Abdullah bin Masood radiallahu anhu says, if you will start getting into the habit of making salah at home, and in the latter part of this hadith, because I'm running out of time, he has mentioned. That in our time, in the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, 
It was only the munafiq that would do this. Malumun nifaq, whose nifaq was known. Only he would read salah at home and not in the masjid. Abdullah bin Masood goes on, If you will do this, La dalaltum, you will go astray. Allah protect me, protect you and protect the entire ummah. If you will abandon this practice of hidayat, Wallah my respected brothers, take the precautions, don't argue with one another about this. Focus on yourself, focus on yourself, introspect, introspect, introspect. Wallah, this condition has come from Allah, Allah protect every one of us, make it easy. But the objective is preparation for that day, when we are going to stand in front of Allah. Has it taken me closer to Allah, or has it distanced me from Allah? Allah give us tawfiq wa akhir, alhamdulillah.